What's up, everyone? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm Nick Nick. I am Rin. And we have an album review for you. So another one that came out on the 7th of May was the newest offering from Artillery X, or if we're counting Roman numerals, 10, because this is their 10th album. I think that's a coincidence. Might be a coincidence. I, or it could be on purpose. Be Those clever Danish people. This comes out on Metal Blade Records. Again, 10th album. They formed in 1982 in mm. Denmark. Mm. Now, this one... It has a bit of a somber cloud over it, and by a bit, I mean a lot of a somber cloud. This is the first album since the passing of their longtime guitarist, Morton Stutzer, who unfortunately passed with blood clot back in 2019. And one of the other founding members of this band is his brother, who is still in the band, so heart goes out to you. So this also marks the appearance of their new guitarist, Kren Meyer? I'm not sure how to pronounce that because it's that A and the E that are connected and I don't know what noise that makes. Hey, oh, hey. Yep. But he joins and he's actually formerly of Thorium and Nominon. I believe he plays in a band also called Sacrificial, which I'm not familiar with, but I am familiar with Nominon and Thorium, so those away, I brought those up. This is a band I've always had difficulty kind of describing. It's thrash metal. It's definitely thrash metal, but it kind of lurks in that you know, debatable area of whether or not it's thrash metal or speed metal, because this band's wheelhouse is bigger than thrash metal. Yeah, so it starts out with the Devil's Symphony, which there's a uh, sitar yeah. and like bizarre noises. I don't mean bizarre like strange, bizarre like an open market of shopping in the Middle Eastern country. Yep. And then bring in the high octane rock and roll. Yep, thrash. Yeah. And then the singers comes in. He kind of sounds like if a young, oiled-up Sebastian Bach made sweet relations to a shaven, young Joey Belladonna, and Klaus from The Scorpions was watching. God, I hope I find great pictures for that reference. That kid is the same. Family reunions yeah. are awkward. Yeah. In, I mean, that's, that's accurate. Like, the first thing you hear from him is a giant 80s. Yeah! That. And... It's weird because it contrasts the music all throughout this. Yeah. Honestly, it's it's when they're playing slower, more mid-tempo, more heavy metal related stuff. Like classic heavy yeah, metal. Yeah. That it sounds yeah. a little bit more comfortable. When they're going like high octane, which Devil Symphony, it comes it's, out whooping. It's a thrasher. I mean, it's yeah. overkill. But I mean, since we got a singer, I'm going to say Flotsam and Jetsam because yep. that's a band that knows how to do thrashy riffs and yep. really good singing. The way he sings, it has the 80s flair to it. Yes. But there's also like almost kind of like a 90s, I don't know, yeah. there, there's something like with the harmonies because frequently, usually in the choruses, he'll harmonize with himself because right. he does like layered vocals. Yeah, yeah. The band will do all that live, mm -hmm. which I looked up on that and if they didn't, I would be like, mm, that's mm -hmm. too yeah, much studio backing stuff. Backing tracks, no, 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 no. You can only do that if you're Kiss <laughs> or Motley Crue. Yeah. But it's it's interesting just in terms of the intonation. Like there was parts on there that was like, ah, that's so close to like maybe Alice in Chains if they sung a little bit higher. It's, it's I want to say Yarl, but it's not a Yarl, but it's that... That that mouth shape right there, you, you get it. But if you talk like that, it comes out like this. But uh, yeah, uh, I think, it, and also part of the Danish accent, he pronounces vowels uh, slightly strange. Yeah. Um. So I think that's where that. Yeah. Like I, I. Yeah. It's hard to describe. It is, and you know, while you're getting into the very aggressive music, because I mean, yeah. when they're flying, it's it's a very aggressive thrash. Like I'm thinking, like you know, Exodus. Like it's yeah. barn burners. Songs like In Thrash We Trust, which mm -hmm. is gloriously self-aware and how goofy it is, but yeah. I love it. Yep. And then Force of Indifference, Moore's Ontologica, and uh, Beggars in Black Suits. These are all high octane songs. Yes. Yep. Chuggy palm muted riffs, squealy solos, mm -hmm. and at the same time you have this singer on top, which something I kind of notice is all right. A perfect band to like kind of compare it to is Anthrax. Anthrax. Yeah. You yep. had Joey Belladonna. Great singer. Yep. But he was able to speed up the cadences and mm -hmm. kind of give it like mm -hmm. a punky flair. This guy kind of stays with that more deliberate pace, and he makes sure the last word he says is at least 10 or 15 seconds long. Yeah, you gotta carry that last vowel out. And he does. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he's classically trained. Me either. The song In Your Mind, it's got a really nice stomp to it, heavy riff, 
it's almost got like a Fozzie vibe to me. Now, if somebody like Chris Jericho was the vocalist for a band that wrote songs like this, I think it would be a little more oomph than, say, uh, uh, Fozzie would be. A little bit more grit on the vocals. Yeah. Not to say that the vocals are bad. No. They're I'm, just... <laughs> he's really good. He's really good. Like, probably maybe too good for thrash. Uh, you know, that, that, that debate could be made. Because thrash is uh, dirty. Yeah. Dirty jeans. Not um, cummerbunds. The Benedict Cumberbun, right? Yes. And honestly, like listening to this and hearing the vocals, I had a strong feeling that would be maybe something balladish, and I was pretty right. It's a power ballad. Ghost of Me. Break out the scarves and the lighters. We're going to Power Ballad City. It's in the vicinity of Paradise City. But, you know, there's some slightly different roles. Uh, the ladies are a little cleaner and the cocaine's more hidden. Yes. But, yeah, right away you get acoustic guitars and this is honestly where his vocals really fit, though. Yeah. And I'm almost kind of ashamed because, like, I'm the death metal guy, bunga bunga, whatever. I like the song. I actually yeah, like it's, it. it. It's, it's well written for what it is. Right. Right. And the chorus has a gigantic hook on it. It does. It really does. Yeah. Like, it, it really brings it all together. And, I mean, they captured both moods. Like, they had the more soft and kind mm -hmm. of, I don't know if, like, romantic is the word. Mm, because it's a little sensual. It's a little sensual, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, it gets nice and powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, dudes, wake up and get off your phones. We can, all right, we're going to riff again. Your girlfriend's other moment. This is the way to get into Tawny Katane's pants. But I, I like the abrupt shift of mm. the force of indifference, mm. which just comes out swinging. Like, this is one of the most aggressive tracks on there. The riffs are just powerful as hell. And I gotta say, even the more sung vocals on here really work. Yeah. The, the cadence is mm. interesting. It has a cool hook to the verses, and the chorus is really good, too. You even get some woes and oohs and yeah. ahs. Scream for me, Long Beach! <laughs> Yeah, all those moments. Yes. And you have some really cool lead work in here, which yes. lead work in here is pretty solid yeah. to begin with. This one has a really cool isolated guitar solo mm -hmm. start, and then the rest of the band comes in, and we got the trade-offs, yeah. and I mean, it's everything I like about thrash metal. And the lead to me on that one is uh, like a little bit of Ace Freely licks, a little bit of Slash licks, kind of all jammed together in a nice leather pants package. If this song doesn't get Tawny going, you gotta try harder. So the last song on the record before the two bonus tracks uh, is called Beggars in Black Suits. And it starts out with, is that a glockenspiel? Xylophone? Was ist das? Der Glocken? It's a good tune, but it, 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 it's one of the ones where it feels like he's kind of shoehorning the melodic vocal to fit the riff. When you probably could have come up with a different cadence, but it probably wouldn't have been as sing-songy. Yeah, and again, that was kind of the thing with, you know, uh, how he approaches vocals yeah. like a faster cadence kind of amps up aggression like if right. you have a good like triplet chug behind that yeah. and you have someone just belting out just quick verses of anger or whatever the hell you're singing about right. it has more of an impact like it mm -hmm. kind of ramps mm -hmm. up the intensity yeah. and that's just kind of one of the things that's missing on here is he doesn't do that that's not really his style but I mean the dude's got pipes and he wants to show them off and he does. A little more oomph. A little more, little more balls, young man. Now, one of the only songs I thought was uh, really so-so on here was the song Varg Evium. And after you, the spacey intro, you get a really cool intro riff. It sounds crispy. Epic. Yeah, there's a lot of like Middle Eastern melodies yeah. or stuff that sounds very Middle Eastern Phrygian. on here. But, Phrygian. Yeah. That's the guy with the big ears from Star Trek, right? Yes. Okay. But this song has... It's just a strange construction in it. Mm -hmm. The vocal melody that carries on the verses is interesting, and then it hits this really off note. Or it, isn't, it isn't out of key or anything. It doesn't sound like the right note. Not off-putting, just weird. It, it doesn't fit. Yeah. And the verses don't lead in the chorus particularly well. Yeah. No. In terms of like harsher moments, they do squeeze in one harsh blah or uh. Yeah. 
And I mean, the market value of bleh is definitely up right now. Uh-huh. It's like Bitcoin or Doge Nugget, whatever the hell they're Dodge. called. Dodge Nugget. There yeah. it is. Yeah. You gotta squeeze in a little bleh or blurg or you know whatever. Yeah, and that's we're all for the bleh. Gotta have it. Yeah. But this is just again kind of a like squeeze together song. It doesn't really build into the next moment. Like the transitions are just kind of real knee jerk. Like after the second chorus, it just goes immediately into the bridge. There's no build up. Yeah, like yeah. oh my god, yeah. we're wailing yeah. on solos. Yeah. I didn't have any time to really kind of let it sink in or build up or you got to ramp up the energy. And right, right. This one is probably the one I would say is the most filler-ish on here. Yeah. And yeah. then the weird outro where it does the slow down where it mm-hmm. just sounds like the band is running out of batteries. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the choice there was, but I mean, it just sounds <clears throat> odd. And it's kind of in the middle of the record too, so it, I don't know, maybe takes the energy down a little bit. Yeah. Then you got a song like Eternal Nights, which I think that was a... Uh, Bob Seger song? Oh, it's Hollywood Nights. That's what it was. Uh, no, it starts out with this gnarly bass thing going on, and then into a yeah! That's the time you middle-aged old rockers need to get off the bar stools and shake what your mama gave you in the early 70s when you were born. All you 35 to 49-year-old single ladies might just make it onto the bus van tonight. <laughs> It's a rocker. It is a rocker. It's just a groovy rocker. Yep. It's simple yep. and elegant. Yeah. And just heavy and fun. Yeah. It's fun. It, yeah. That's. Yeah. Yeah. Just one. Like it's it's essentially you know a couple of riffs, but they're put together well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The vocals work really well yep. in this song. Yep. And it kind of stands out as just like kind of the lone groovy just rocker. Now you do get two bonus tracks in here. Now these were released actually last year. The song The Last Journey, which was the tribute to Morton, and it's, uh, I don't know, kind of a half ballad, uh, kind of a rocker. Yep, it's, it's, um, I don't want to say generic, but all the, the I Miss You tropes are there. Yeah. Soaring, flying high, we'll meet again type stuff, but hey, right on. Yeah, like I you. mean, it, right it, on. It feels appropriate. Yep, yep. And the fact that they brought back two of the former singers, Soren Adamson and Fleming Ronsdorf. That sounds made up. It, nope, nope, nope. I think I wrote it down. I even put the umlauts. <laughs> but they show up to do their vocal parts too, and I don't know, they have an interesting harmony with the, yeah. the new guy. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know, it, it's definitely heartfelt. It's just not yep. really the style of music that I'm really into. Right. But the I mean, lead the is lead. really oh. good. Oh, really God. emotional, really melodic. Tasty noodles happening in that one. There's a nice doomy breakdown too yeah, that yeah. I thought was solid. But I mean, overall, a fitting tribute. And then the B mm-hmm. side of that was a solid cover of Trapped Under Ice. And it rips. Yeah. It's a great cover. And even uh, their frontman kind of gruffs up his vocals a little bit. Mm, a little bit, but he takes a lot of the. Yeah! 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 Uh, they take that out of it. <laughs> Uh, they do punch up the drums a little bit more in the uh, the kick pedal area, Mr. <laughs> Lars. Um, but yeah, it's a solid cover. It's ferocious. You can tell they like the song. They're like, hey, maybe we should do a Metallica song. I don't know how to do a Danish accent. I don't know what they sound like. I, they're, right they're, they're, it's probably kind of close to German. Hey, yo, right? Metallica, we got to do a Metallica song. We... That is not Danish. Danish? No. <laughs> no. But yeah, it, pretty good. Just a, maybe, a, maybe a... Overall, though, I thought this was a pretty solid album. And, you know, shamefully, I'll have to say this is the only artillery album I own. And this is a band I've been meaning to actually get more of their stuff. Need more artillery. Stockpile artillery. They're there we go. They uh, are. The Danish. The, the Danish are invading. <laughs> and they brought pastries named after themselves. God. They make cannibalism actually sound pretty yeah. good. Like Lego people that live in houses made of their own flesh. <laughs> But uh, I think I'm gonna give this three and a half stars. For the most part, I really enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. I think they musically are at their strongest when they are going fast. Those mm-hmm. aggressive songs are really punchy. They just kind of ramp up the energy and you hear a lot of cool songwriting dynamics within them. They're not just mm-hmm. all barn burners. Mm-hmm. They like to squeeze in really cool you know, transitions in there. The lead work is crisp. And I mean, as much as you know, we, we talk about the vocals, he's a damn good singer. It's just not all the time does he fit. And, you know, where he does fit, he 
exceeds uh, with flying colors. It's just, you know, I agree with Ren here. Thrash is usually more gritty, and he has, like, the cleanest approach on here. And, I mean, he's he's damn good. He, yeah. I just, you know, I want to hear a little bit more grit to the vocals. But then again, if you're doing other projects, don't damage him. Because I believe he's in a King Diamond, Merciful Fate tribute band called Merciful Diamond. King pretty, Fate was taken, I'm sure. Pretty, pretty badass. But yeah, solid album. If you love thrash metal, if you love speed metal, if you love classic heavy metal, it's pretty much all here, and you should get this. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the three and a half as well. It's a fun record. All these fellas know how to play. The vocals are tremendous, just a little strange in some of the more aggressive parts. Um, I would probably like to hear him do more of a priest style, mid tempo thing, oh, and see, like, yeah, yeah painkiller, <laughs> something like that. But yeah, the guitar players, the, the tone is great. The, the production on this is fantastic. The songs are fun, a little dated, perhaps. Um, we're a little but dated. If, if we're <laughs> a little dated. Go and get it, squeeze your fanny into some zebra print or leopard print, whichever you fancy. Um, both are endangered, I think, in Denmark. Um, but yeah, pick it up, jam it out, and show somebody uh, what you got. So if you enjoyed this review, Give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon, so if you'd like to help us out there, there will be a link below in the description. We're going to throw on a whole bunch of different content on there, gag reels and pictures and just random dumb stuff to keep you guys entertained because, well, we like you and we want to give you back something. We also have a giveaway going on. Once we hit 6,000 subscribers, we have a nice little four CD bundle we're going to give away. And we're getting pretty close, so if you have not checked out that video, there will also be a link to that in the description. And if you don't click that one, don't worry. You go to our channel, it's playing automatically. Just comment on there and you are in. And tell a friend. And tell a friend. Tell all your friends. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Neighbors. Cousins you haven't talked to in two years. Yep. How are so you? I don't care about the kids. They're all <laughs> metal. Have you heard it? Okay. Talk to you at Christmas. So with that, we thank you all and we will catch you later.